That body, that body bad, 12 years old. I was 12 years old. To find out it was terrible, it never come this way. Outside, North Slope, they never come. You know, to last August, maybe, walk up to a North Slope from this area, Nana area. And they come home maybe uh, October. When it starts snowing, they start coming home. Dried, dried some meat, fat, skin, sinew. Some of them look like they're going to get you to the house. He said, Madame, I'll go to the house. They're getting closer. One of these days, we'll have lots of caribou. In my I don't know meat before white people come. There was, uh, they never migrated out that way, lots of caribou here and there. The man he looked up to the stuck while he damn makanok mother damn mak. In your grill, not on a cook. The cock manga took to mana, the cock manga laughing. Mama honey. It's a medicine man, real big one, I mean uh, strong. So, they were out there for a long time. A paya kuni, tuk tuli wala nang ikaw lang ayo kalak tuk ngaliwa dako. Ala utek talak si tuwa pagma. Inyo tuk, tama ni inyo naktam kakak mga orimman. Iyang nik inyo kulak sa mga sok tuk tuk tigit na masingah si utek tawi blut. Inyo brigi choy amit. I'm going to go in your shoot. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to In my younger days, we don't have caribou. We don't have uh, moose. We don't have beavers. But then uh, what they relied on was a uh, muskrat hunting in springtime. People catch those by thousands, muskrats. They went out, scattered all over the, all over the river. Hardly anybody in the, in the village, you know, everybody move out in springtime and hunt um, muskrats, you know. And uh, later on, the caribou started getting closer. Like they, once they started migrating south, why we start going out caribou hunting around the Kobuk area with the dog teams. I think it would be better if we go up there and then go beyond the hills and check see if there's some caribou spots in there. Yeah. It won't take long, but... This time of the year, why uh, once they start migrating uh, south. 
when you talk with the people around Coburg area that once they start carting, you can always know they're coming in. When you run into caribou, you don't need to go up the hills. But then uh, you had a hard time seeing caribou while well, you had to go up the hill and also some towers that you can climb into any little higher places where you can look out and see and see if there's any caribou around the area. Like right now, they're coming around, going by a few here and there, not very many. Um, uh, they'll be going by for a while and then slack off in the second group. <clears throat> Once they start coming through, why they start coming through till the trees up. The old timers usually say just to leave the first bunch alone, let them go through without without killing them. Just so the other bunch should start following the trail and then the, the caribou would start coming by, you know, instead of uh, taking another route. You have to let, uh, <clears throat> like a cow with a calf, uh, most of the people they talk about that cow and the calf uh, that making a trail for the for the whole herd that should be coming by so you had to let them go by. I've been shooting ever since I was a little boy, maybe six years old. I started hunting muskrat in springtime with single shot. And I was taught by my uh, aunt and my uh, cousins, you know, how to use the rifle. And my brother, also my uncle, used to tell me what, how to handle the gun. You cannot walk around with a loaded gun. You can have Ammo in the magazines, whatever kind of rifles you may use, or shotgun, you can have those ammo or shot shells in your magazine, but then you cannot carry that thing around with a loaded. I mean, you cannot load it and carry that around. Also, you cannot lean onto it, hold it on the barrel. You cannot lean on a, lean on a rifle or a shotgun. That's the safest way to go out hunting. This time of the year, what we usually do is look for bulls, because uh, <clears throat> uh, the cows, uh, they, get a, they get a little fond, you know, you, you can't, you don't want to shoot no cows. And and the bulls that you can see, uh, some of the young bulls, you know, in the first bunch start coming in through, and you can, like, for example, what we run into, you know, when you run into a little herd like that, you can see the bulls easy. And those are the ones that you wanted to go for. Caribou's got good eyes. And they got good ears. They can hear you. They can see you. When you saw caribou's, well, you got to figure a way to get close to them. It all depends on where they are, where you see them, what kind of a terrain there is around the area. You got to you got to see in what direction the wind's blowing from. And then you gotta make plan, or if you're alone, why well, you gotta start thinking about which way you can get close to them. You know, if there's a hill there, there's a good chance of getting close to them.
everybody stay low, especially during the summer. Summertime like this, why she start catching caribou. You know, um, you gotta stay low as much as you can get close to them. Uh, you don't want to shoot uh, the caribou with a small caliber. Uh, once you shoot with small caliber, you may wound some of the caribou and they kept on going and you lose uh, uh, the caribou you shoot. But then a little higher caliber like uh, or like a 243 and a little higher power, I think they're a good uh, caribou rifle. See, you gotta sight your rifle and you gotta know your weapon when you're out uh, going out and hunting, not only on caribou, on mainly everything, you know. The chances is, uh, uh, if you really want to catch caribou, why well, you gotta make a long shot, but then you know, you, you gotta know your rifle. Most of the time we know uh, the terrain we're hunting. We would uh, go around bushes and stay out of sight. Or if there's a little hill, we would try, try and go through the low spots and get close to the caribou. Otherwise, we're right on the trail and sometimes we're behind bushes and they would just come right up to us. To get a good shot, we get as close as we can and save most of the meat. Uh, we would like the next shot. In the fall time, we look for the bigger ones because, uh, you know, they're fatter. We know they're in full rut about October. You can always see that they're fighting and to protect their mates so we don't get any more wolves in. We try to hunt them before, before that time. Once you shot a caribou, why, you just go right over to the caribou and you want the blood out, why, you gotta cut the throat right away and let it bleed and start cutting it up. And, uh, <clears throat> leggings, you gotta cut the leggings like, uh, you know, skin the legs, hoofs, and all that. Save, the, save every part of it. You have to uh, put the uh, caribou on the back. Once you've got antlers, why you just pull the antlers further back that the caribou can stay steady, especially when you're working alone. Next thing you do when you got the caribou on the back, why what you do is uh, start cutting it uh, right through the center, over the belly, all the way to the back from the throat, and then in the legs, and then start skinning the legs and in uh, in the, the hooks. You gotta use your hand to uh, <clears throat> pull the skin uh, after you use a knife for skinning the legs and you start pulling the la uh, skin out from the legs and on the side like that with your bare hand, all the way to the back. That way you don't have no knife mark or anything if you wanna use the skin.
After you take the skin off, you start taking the belly off, belly part, you know, and then you save that belly part also. And then turn it uh, left side up and start taking the intestines out. Once you pull everything out like that, um, you, you can always know there's a heart and there's a liver. And uh, <clears throat> part of the intestines, like um, I think they call it Bible, or I don't uh, I don't know the English name for it. I just call it Eskimos, salami like sausage, you know, <laughs> put a fat and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. turn it inside out and clean it up. The traditional way is uh, after you clean a caribou out, like uh, you open it and take the brisket off and start taking the legs off. If you don't have no, no anything to lay them on with, why well, you gotta get, uh, knock down any uh, willows or anything to keep it clean, you know, put it on top of the willows or whatever you got around close by. If you're out on the tundra why you can put them right on the top of the lichen piles, you know, and uh, it'll keep it clean, you know. After you take the back strap off, you cut the bone right to the middle there. You find the joint. It's not too hard to find the joint. You cut the, you cut it in half, and what you do is uh, take the ribs off. Also, you gotta clean the head and take the head home. You gotta skin the whole head, and you don't wanna you don't wanna waste the head either. You took take the jaw off and clean it out with the tongue. The tongue and the jaws you can boil them and eat those too. If you're gonna pack that, you you want to bone it out there too, but then you don't you don't want to leave no no meat out there. You gotta take everything home. If you're gonna have to make more than one trip, why well, you gotta have to make one more trip to take everything to your transportation, whatever your kind of transportation you got. Like if you go out with a boat in the summer, why well, once you catch caribou way out there, you gotta bring the whole thing back down to the boat and take everything home. Yeah. <laughs>
Once you catch anything like a moose or a caribou or, or a bear, you can divide that up to the people or whoever needs some meat. And uh, of course, they got no freezers to put it, put it away, you know. And uh, the traditional way is uh, when you got young young people uh, on the first catch, you know, they usually give it away to the elders. Nakula Bertra Miva, Tutumit, Tutun Maga, Savalo Dora Hluit, Nudad, Pit Madi, Nakur, Tokanading, um, Nalangi Rahluit, Asi Tokanat Kanok, Ami Hallo, Nesleta Hallo, Oko Oko Dadun, Nudad Piraktu, Tat Nang 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 Ni do man una angora savagaria de manga itna ni igitic toluit no gunlakan up yak tolu pit yacha tatna de manga kanga sit to crack nagaka kamit kati crack to boragariat ang nang sa ashi kill a yak sip luit kamit yuding sit to lip yuding kamit kati yuding Tana Pirarigat to do Nakula Bertok, Ilokan, Savora Lodora Clues of Octuni Sule Ikayu Doraktok, Art Kaship Lugo, Kamit Lugo, Alex Silip Lugo, Pini Okoro, Okimi Ilokan to do darkness to Boragat. Uvali Uvanga in your in your wing, my it not to Masukdorlu, Pitya Chat to to win your amic, Tatna be amic. A mare panicted Kisora Hlu, panicted Taria, Mama Nagaka, Papa, Papa Gama. A exit ye in your soul in the Sunigang Muroden Nagaka. Tatnelin <laughs> Art cutting Nurgo, a laric suit Naracto. You don't want to waste all all the things you catch, that you got to use everything what you catch. If you, if you don't need it, you got to ask your neighbors if they need that thing, and you got to share with the neighbors. Your neighbors, share with them, and be a good success hunter. This has been going on ever since uh, from our ancestors. We learned that most important is that you got to be a good conservationist, that you got to know how much game animal you got around the country, right where you're living. And you don't want to overkill uh, like the moose and things like caribou, you don't want to overkill those. I was born and raised here in, in the village. This is a subsistence village. That's where they settled down to subsist, live off the land, living off the land in the fall, in the winter, in the spring, and in the summer. Mm -hmm. 